What's going on everyone? Bendy Bono here for another foray into the Summa Theologica. Nice short three article question today. We are right in the middle, well actually still kind of towards the beginning, of the Treatise on the Angels. Last time we kicked it off with a discussion of what are angels made out of, and it turns out not much. And today we look at, or we start the first of three questions, uh, looking at the relationship between angels and corporeal things. So angels are incorporeal, we've established that, but how do they relate to corporeal things? And so we start with question 51 of the angels in comparison with bodies. Three articles here. Number one, whether the angels have bodies naturally united to them. And I think for most of us, this one's going to kind of feel like deja vu all over again because it's like, didn't we already answer that question when we talked about the angels being incorporeal, immaterial? Um, I would have thought so. Apparently Aquinas wants one more crack at it here, but very similar material. So do the angels have bodies naturally united to them? Well, uh, three objections. Origen says that God alone is, quote, without material substance and without any companionship of corporeal addition. Uh, Gregory says that angels are rational animals. Animals have bodies and souls. And then number three, life is more perfect in angels than in souls. Souls live and give life to bodies, therefore so do angels. Uh, presumably the assumption there is that if angels don't give life to bodies, then they're actually failing to do something that souls can do, which would make them less perfect. Right. Argument from authority, though. Dionysius says what we've all already seen is that angels are incorporeal. To have a body is not part of the nature of an intellectual substance, since being corporeal is not required for the intellect, and some intellectual beings have bodies, but a perfect intellectual substance such as an angel does not like us, and we've seen all of that. Nothing there should be too surprising. Uh, reply to number one, shouldn't really surprise us. Origen has always been a figure in church history who has... Uh, the standard opinion of him within Christian orthodoxy is that he has made some mistakes while also having some valuable things to say. And Aquinas just says this was one of his mistakes. Gregory was speaking metaphorically. And number three, Aquinas is like, well, that's actually just the opposite, that an intellectual substance not united to a body is more perfect because it doesn't have those corporeal limitations then. Okay, so once again, in case you missed it, Angels don't have bodies. But can they assume bodies? And if you know your Bible stories, you know this one. It's kind of a more interesting question, right? There is nothing superfluous in the work of an angel. The assumption of a body would be superfluous. So our objections are saying, no, angels don't assume bodies. Bodies that angels move, such as the heavenly bodies, again, we talked about that in the medieval mindset uh, last time, uh, are not assumed by them, therefore angels do not assume bodies. And if angels assume, and I love this objection here, it's so practical, and so is his response to it in a, a, a minute. Uh, you know, what are angel bodies made out of then? Well, if angels assumed bodies from earth or water, they couldn't disappear. From fire, they'd be burning up everything they touched. If from air, they'd have no shape or color. So, no body. Uh, Augustine says that the angels who appeared to Abraham, referring to the angels who appear um, when the birth of Isaac is foretold to Abraham and Sarah in Genesis, uh, Augustine says that they assumed bodies. And our argument basically, you know, scripture affirms that the angels appeared not just in prophetic vision, but bodily. And these bodies are not natural to them, as we've seen, they're not corporeal, it's not part of their natural thing, but they're assumed by them. Okay? And then, angels assume bodies not for themselves, but for us. So yes, if it was just for them, it would be superfluous, but it's for our sake. The assumed body of an angel is different from a body merely moved by an angel. I'll take your word for it. Uh, number three, air, when condensed, can take on both shape and color. Therefore, that's right, what you've always wondered, angels assume bodies out of air. So there's one mystery in your life resolved. 
And now for one of my favorite articles in the Summa so far, Article 3, whether the angels exercise functions of life in the bodies assumed. In other words, do angels, when they assume these bodies, have bodily functions? In other words, do angels ever have to take a crap? All right, six wonderful objections here. Uh, to assume a body without bodily functions would be a pretense. This is unbecoming of angels. Number two, nothing in the work of an angel is without purpose, and their body parts would lack purpose without bodily functions. Okay, next three are all very similar. To move is a function of life, we see the angels moving. To speak is a function of life, we see the angels talking. To eat is a function of life, we see the angels eating, referring to the scriptural stories where the angels uh, assume bodies. And then number six gets into that wonderful verse in Genesis that speaks of the sons of God coming down and having relations uh, with uh, human women and creating babies and that's the whole Nephilim thing. And so basically do angels get it on with humans? Um, so our objection is saying uh, the Bible speaks of angels begetting children, so that would seem to be a bodily function. And just wait till we get to the answer to that one. It's amazing. All right. Argument from authority. The bodies of angels have no life. So they're just made out of air, right? Therefore, they do not have the functions of life. So how are we going to get around that number six? Well, let me just wait and see. All right, so some functions of life have parallels in inanimate things. Speech is similar to sounds. Inanimate objects can make. It is in this sense that angels appear to take on the function of life. In other words, you know, a tree is an inanimate object, but maybe you hear it, the bark creaking on a, as it's swaying in the wind or something, and that's a parallel to speech. So, uh, I don't know. It's, it's roughly what he's getting at. Okay. Our objections answered. Uh, one and two are pretty similar. The whole question of pretense and purpose. Uh, number one, the angels assume bodies for our sake. That uh, This would be in vain if their bodies did not appear to have the function of life. And similar thing here, the purpose of their body parts, in other words, they're assuming bodies actually look like bodies, is to effectively use their spiritual angel powers. How about that? The angels are not moved by their assumed bodies, but move accidentally as a result of assuming a body that moves. I don't even, uh, you know, there's a distinction there, but one that I think is just going to kind of go over most of our heads. It certainly went over mine a little bit. The angels, angel bodies do not speak. Rather, the angels a semblance of speech in the air. Uh, so the angel... You know, the body isn't actually speaking. There's a semblance of speech in the air. Again, minor distinction. Uh, the angels do not uh, only appear to eat, um, but it's not a true eating, and he cites Tobias 12, 19 for that. Uh, all right. And I'm just going to read my summary here because this is amazing. So demons may use assumed bodies for sexual intercourse, but the... the uh, um, angels wouldn't, because that would be improper, but demons might, okay? So, yes, angels can pop a boner. Uh, but, there's a catch here, because their bodies have no actual semen. So, any impregnation takes place from the demon stealing semen from actual man and using it to impregnate a woman. So, boys and girls, a demon comes and sticks it in you. Don't worry, that's not demon jizz. Okay? It's just regular jizz. Um, uh, I, yeah. <laughs> we'll just leave that at that. Uh, so things you probably never wanted to know about angels and never thought to ask, well, Thomas Aquinas is here to think about and ask for you. So there you go. Angels and bodily functions. Another mystery solved. All right, so that's it. Just a nice short one there. Uh, and I'll be back in a few days for question 52. 
uh, about angels in relation to place. Until then, I'm Bendy Bone. I'll talk to you later. Goodbye.